Fast snacks, fast food, fast reviews. Snack Masters Inc., a podcast served to you in 30 minutes or less. Snack Masters Incorporated. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. You'll be snacking with the Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Hello and welcome to Snack Masters Incorporated. I'm Dooner, here with the man who lives by the slogan, Great Potatoes, Tasty Destinations, <laughs> it's MSG! MSG, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Doing good. It's, uh, geez, the weekend before the Super Bowl. So I saw some Giants fans were rooting for the Eagles, and to me, that that's a little bit crazy, because wouldn't you want to be the only team to beat the Patriots during this run and to have beat them twice? You know, because it changes the conversation. If it's like the Patriots had this great dynasty, but they just couldn't beat the Giants or Eli, if the Eagles win, then it's like the Patriots had this great dynasty, but they just couldn't beat the <laughs> NFC East, or they just couldn't beat goofy-looking quarterbacks. <laughs> You wanted your rival to lose. That's it. End of story. Lose. And I'm sure some interesting things will happen. I remember last time they had Timberlake in there. You had the big nipple gate thing with Janet Jackson. <laughs> that game itself wasn't that great until the end. And then the dominating conversation became it, not just the Super Bowl halftime show, but I guess media in general and what's shown on broadcast TV. I think the game might need something. It might need an ingredient like that just for... Uh, I think people might be a little bit sick of seeing the Patriots. Well, if, if you heard this, this is interesting. I just heard it a couple weeks ago, and I, I had never heard it before, but they said that that moment, that halftime moment, spawned YouTube, that the guy that invented YouTube, because he was fascinated by it and wanted to see it again, wanted to have that clip and watch it whenever he wanted to or whatever, that inspired him to start the YouTube service. Wow. What did it, an inspirational moment that, uh, that changed society in more ways than one. Yeah. I, I was blown away. I never heard that. Maybe we can change the butterfly effect to, uh, I don't know, like the nipple effect, right? Yeah. yeah. When a nipple flaps her wings in uh, Africa. You can fly? You can fly! It changes the, it changes the, the YouTube <laughs> landscape across America and the world. Yeah. Hey, man, what were really popular last summer were fidget spinners and these fidget cube things, but definitely the fidget spinners. Did your kids happen to get into these? I know that my, my niece and nephew did. Yeah. In fact, I'm opening my drawer right here, and I've got, um, I'm looking at three right off the top here, and there's probably more buried in there, too. I mean, we, me and my son got a little bit obsessed with these things for a little bit here. It really hit critical mass, because now if you go into the dollar store or Walmart or anywhere, they just have like buckets and buckets <laughs> of fidget spinners. You know, there's huge backlash at the schools, like people, teachers confiscating them and you know parents arguing the validity of them because their kid had undiagnosed ADHD and this helped them and all that stuff it definitely peaked and, and valleyed pretty quick have they hurt anybody when I was uh, I think I was like in fifth grade and for a very brief period of time there were these things called snap bracelets and it was basically <laughs> a piece of metal within within cloth and when you hit it it would snap around your wrist but the problem was that the manufacturing process was very shoddy. There wasn't just one brand. It was sold on the counters at any convenience store. And after wear and tear, it would rip through the fabric and it was starting to cut people's hands. <laughs> I don't know how widespread the injuries were. I never managed to hurt myself with a snap bracelet, but they were like very quickly banned and then gone completely. You've never seen a snap bracelet again. No, and a funny thing is I, I actually tore open or ripped open one time and inside was just a random piece of tape measure and it was covered with cloth and that's apparently all you need to make one, but probably the same thing. I don't know. I've, I've seen videos where people like try to catch it in their teeth and they end up smacking their teeth, but I think under normal use... Unless you throw it at somebody or something, there it'll make a good weapon. Well, there's an interesting story that ties into the fidget spinners. And there's actually, because fidget itself, fidget spinner isn't a brand. It's not a brand name. But concurrently, right before the fidget spinner blew up and got huge, there was a Kickstarter for something called a fidget cube. Mm. And initially, the founders, they wanted to raise just $15,000. But within a month, they ended up getting, I think, 150000 plus orders. They raised over $6 million. Are you familiar with the fidget cube for one? Yeah. It's um 
it's sort of the principle of the fidget spinner. It's something to mess around with with your hands. It's one of those undiagnosed ADHD things. People who like to uh, press down pen caps a whole bunch, that kind of stuff. And on here, you've got a few tactile things. You have like a ball bearing you can push down. You have some dials you can move. There's a light switch. There's uh, like a rotating dial. There's another dial that's sort of like a uh, like a dual shock control pad thing. And then there's uh, those pen cap push down things. Mm. It's a nice product. I found them for a dollar. They were on clearance at Walmart. And it got me wondering, why is this product already on clearance? Because last time I'd seen them, they were like $10. Well, what happened was this company had reached out to a Chinese manufacturer, the, the actual real Fidget Cube company. They manufactured a, a big order, but it turned out to be defective. So they ended up moving to another factory and having these built. But while they did that, the factory that made the original batch of them started flooding the US market. You know, I think there's patent pending on this. I'm not sure how stores could sell them, but whatever. They end up on gas station shelves. A lot of people got theirs who had been waiting and they got them for like $5 instead of $10. And it shows sort of a business lesson, I guess, for the original company. And it's kind of sad because they tried to do the right thing and do right by their consumers. But they ended up getting burned. My daughter was kind of the one who introduced me to that. She actually ordered one, and I think it was like 15 or 20 bucks when they were the big deal. The pen caps, there's three like pen cap sounds that can go down, but then there's two that are silent. <laughs> However, the ones that are silent are just, to me, they're not as satisfying because you don't, I don't know, I feel like I keep pressing yeah. them harder to, to get that noise or to get some sort of feedback and response. Uh, Snackmaster Dylan Snackmaster Live. I had seen them. I know they had fidget spinners and they um they weren't familiar with the fidget cube. So I talked to him about them. I asked him how how if people are still using these things and if they're still big in school. Let's roll the tape. I'm here with Snackmaster Live and Snackmaster Dill. Now you guys just got some fidget cubes. Have you played with one of these before? No. No. But you had fidget spinners, right? Yeah. Well, I did. My friend at school had one of these, so I said, "Could I try it?" And my other friend said, "Could I try it?" So my friend Ella let me let me try it for a sec. Are they popular in school, or is she the only one that has them? Um, she's like in my class. They're not popular. No one like has them. Yeah. No one. Like, no one. Has, no no one, one brings them to school, but I'm sure people have them. No. Do they bring fidget spinners to school? No. Oh, okay. My my friend Ella brings like her like everything. She brings like her diary. She brings. Wow. She brings her um fidget. Cube, is she allowed to bring? Are, are you allowed to bring fidget spinners or fidget? Oh, we don't know. We don't know. We yeah. don't know. But we sometimes I bring like my Pokemon. So, oh, yeah, to trade them. Is and, that allowed? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So but, you're not. Are you not allowed to bring toys to school though? Small no, ones that like talk. You would get. You would totally get caught if you bring like um big, huge stuff. Yeah. Like, so if you were like discreet about it, if you were to use like this fidget cube is easier to use in class than a spinner because the spinner makes noise and you kind of have to hold it up. Yeah. This you could like do under your desk, but if your teacher caught you, would she take it away? Yeah. Ah. Because she's Cause my we, teacher's very strict. Yeah. Yeah, my mine isn't, but she's on the watch because she like checks everybody's table. Wow. So now that you've used the fidget cube and the fidget spinner, which one do you like better? Fidget cube. Really, the fidget cube. Wow. Yeah. Because with the spinner, after you spin it, that's kind of all there is to it. This yeah, you have more things to yeah, press. Yeah, because this this has more things and. All like you do you for like, a fidget is just spin, spin, spin until you don't need to do it anymore. I would but, definitely give this a hundred. Well, a hundred. A hundred out of a hundred. Yeah, one hundred. Perfect score. All right, so they were into it. Do you still use your fidget spinner? No, no. They've been in the <laughs> drawer for a few months. All right, man. Well, big game at the end of the season is coming up. I didn't get any mustard, but I did get some Doritos Blaze. It's a new flavor. What you got on these Blaze is it's a purple bag. They they look like they're fiery. I'm assuming this is some type of hot chip. I don't know what the the, the heat is derived from. It doesn't. Uh, it says it's like licking a volcano. Whoa! Intense flavor eruption, cataclysmic crunch, what? amped up fiery heat. <laughs> these are, uh, what do you got in this bag? You got ten servings. It's twelve chips to a serving. 140 calories, seven grams of fat. Let's check it out. Let's well, first things first. Let's see if it's got. That cataclysmic crunch. Let's give it the crunch factor test. I mean, it crunches like a regular Dorito, so I didn't get any cataclysmic <laughs> crunch. Were you getting any seismic activity uh, on your end? <laughs> uh, nothing that registered on the Richter scale. So these are, I mean, these are well coated. There's a lot of red dust on here. It looks exactly like how you'd expect a fiery Dorito to look. And yeah, I mean, there's some heat there. It, it starts to settle in. It tastes a bit like a fiery Cheeto. I don't know if they borrowed the seasoning from that, but it's very it's very similar because it's hot, but then it's got an underlying vinegary tang. You know, it's kind of a nice heat too. 
I think the bag oversells it. The bag kind of makes it seem like the kind of chip, like you'd eat one or two, and then then you got to call it quits because your eyes start watering. But with these ones, the heat's there and you can feel it, but it doesn't it doesn't go over a tipping point. Hmm. You know what I mean by that? Like some some chips or some foods or some sauces that are too that are too hot. It just it eventually like your tongue just hurts, you know, and that's the only flavor that you're really tasting. But here, with each one, each time like I bite into a new one. I can taste all the different elements on here. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. A lot of times they, you know, it's just dictated by the the heat itself and it's it's almost like a challenge to get through the whole serving size because all you're getting is kind of piling on a little more heat each time. Did they try to sneak any lime? That seems to be popular with all these hot stuff. No, you know, and my favorite Tostitos are the ones with lime on it. But these here, no, there's if there is lime in here, it's being covered up by by other things. It's um you know what? I'm smelling them too. There's almost like an Asian type of seasoning scent to the bag that isn't as present when you're when you're eating the chip. The flavor kind of stays with you for a little bit too. I'm just letting it hang out on my tongue. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't really like super hot chips that much because even when they're not overpowering like this, it's just uh it's a it's still a short snack trip for me because I, I find the flavors interesting, but I just I don't really want to indulge. So I guess this is good for keeping you to like one serving or less. I'm not going to house the bag, but it's solid. I mean, it, you know, I don't necessarily know if I would buy this one again, but I think what they're going for, they executed very well. If you do like a fiery chip, I would probably say that this is this is a strong contender. I'm really liking that little bit of like Szechuan or whatever it is underneath it, that little Asian flair there that gives it just a slightly, a slightly different tweak on the flavor EQ. You know, if you're big on the hot flavors, I would say this is a definite try. This is probably a, about a nine. For me, though, uh, probably about a six. And it's really no fault of its own. It's just my preference when it comes to spicier chips. Wow, that seems uh, the complexity of it fascinates me that, you know, all the layered different flavors and the subtleties and stuff. Huh. All right. What I picked up here, you know, interested. I'm always interested in things I've never had before, something new, and I hadn't seen these before. These are, uh, you know, your standard Tim's Cascade style potato chips, but these are the Vlasic dill pickled. So they partnered with Vlasic here. You know, it's got a picture of the pickle jar on it. And uh, again, I've never seen these, so I thought I'd give them a shot. Uh, you get about 13 chips, it says, per serving. Uh, 140 calories, 80 from fat. Um, nine of those are trans fat. Three grams of protein. Okay, so I, I actually dug into these last night. Uh, I was starving to death and um, left the bag open. My son was just dying to tear into it. And so we both kind of pounded some. I'm going to have one right now just so you can hear the crunch. Mm. Yeah, so I'm looking at the bag here too, and uh, yeah, you're right. It's got a big pickle jar on there. It's really selling the the Vlasic dill pickle flavor. So if I were to b buy a bag of these, I'd really want some strong pickle coming off here. I do like all the different pickle chips that are coming out for the most part, except when they put like herb on there. But when they go with like a regular dill pickle, they're hanging out in the uh, vinegary side of the flavor pool. I'm all over it. What is uh, what's Tim's doing with this chip? Yeah, no, and I don't know what like I don't know that I the the Vlasic brand is is what sells me. I don't know what differentiates that taste from other necessarily pickles or or what it adds to the party here. But um, these are actually phenomenal. You know, they've got the standard crunch and of of the kettle chip, and man, I think they really hit the hit it right on the money with the, with the flavor. It's it's strong. I like bold flavors as I. As I age and kind of beat up my taste buds, I found that I like umami. My mommy? No. Umami. It's Japanese for savory. Mommy. They really kick the seasoning up here, and it's it's absolutely delicious. It's not it's not overpowered by by the vinegar. I would would have been disappointed too, but you get a really strong, nice pickle flavor with it, um, and it smells like I mean, it smells like a jar of pickles. Yeah, this bag is going to be gone by the end of the day, guaranteed. Even if my son doesn't get into it. I'd give these a nine only because I'm, I'm pretty judicious with giving things a 10. I'm going to buy these again. These are probably definitely my favorite flavor of, of Tim's chips. I prefer this over a pickle. Now, how into pickles are you? Do you actually drink the pickle juice? Because I've done that before. I usually take a couple swigs. No, actually, I, I use the pickle juice. I have a copycat recipe for um, Chick-fil-A. Do you have Chick-fil-A there? We, well, we do. Uh, Mayor Menino tried to keep them out for a while, but yeah, it's it's here. Okay, so we don't. Uh, the closest one we have is, I think it's like eight hours away, but I love Chick-fil-A. I love their, you know, it's nostalgic for me growing up in Florida and all that stuff, but 
one of the secrets to what they do is they soak their chicken in half pickle juice, half milk. Oh my God. They marinate it. When I want to make some chicken nuggets, the kids love them. I use the pickle juice. So I'll buy a big jar of pickles just for the juice, but it's pretty rare for me to just go in and, and mac on a, a pickle. If they just sold bottles of pickle juice, I'd probably just buy those. Some people swear by it as a hangover cure. I, I've tried it before. You're supposed to drink some before you, you go to bed. It, it never worked for me. If I was drinking enough to get a hangover, you know, no, no little pickle juice or a few extra electrolytes were going to save my butt the next day. I can't imagine slugging down some pickle juice after I'm, you know, <laughs> been tying one on. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I would like want to put some ice with it or something, you know, put a little, put, a, put it in a little tumbler. <laughs> Hi, boy. A highball glass of uh, pickle juice. Only the finest, like a, like a warm cavassier, just heated up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man speaking of something that i uh, that i i would probably get drunk but not sober uh, what i used to drink would be a meatball parm sub we had mentioned these pasta bow ties before yeah i had not tried the pasta chips when we were talking about all the different uh vessels of delivery snacks were coming in we we'd seen the pasta chips the flavor that finally caught my eye was this meatball parm and it kind of acts as a healthy alternative in the sense that it's non-gmo it's uh, 120 calories per serving, four grams of fat. What is it made out of? Enriched germ salmonella. No, not salmonella. That would be bad. <laughs> Semolina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, olive oil, meatball parm seasoning. Yeah, you got any uh, salmonella chips? <laughs> I guess that could work like the tapeworm, right? That would clean out your system. You'd probably lose uh, a good 10 pounds with a little, uh, little food poisoning. <laughs> I remember we used to go on nature things, and if you were to touch like a frog or a turtle, they would tell you to never put your fingers in your mouth afterwards because that was, uh, that was a great way to get salmonella. They also used to always say that about raw eggs. What kid doesn't eat like lick the spoons in the batter when you're making cookies or something? Like, Why does putting something in brownie batter or cookie batter suddenly render the salmonella undeliverable? You know what I'm talking about? They always say, like, don't eat raw eggs. Like, it's salmonella. <laughs> I think those are like farm fresh eggs, aren't they? Like pasteurized eggs. I think they kill, kill that, don't they? I have never, I, I have yet to encounter somebody who's gotten sick from eating cookie dough batter. So I know exactly where it, maybe there is some component in there that, you know, neutralizes it or that's the antidote at the same time as the poison or something. But no, I, I don't know. Well, either way, these, uh, these actually turned out to be kind of nice. I wasn't sure what to expect from them. I, I expected it to taste like dry pasta just when you say pasta chips, but uh, let's take a bite into here. It looks kind of like a fafeli or fafeli is like a bow tie pasta that's connected together and it's a bit airy in the middle. <laughs> The flavoring tastes like something you'd find on a goldfish. The pasta chip itself has a very sort of reminiscent of like a pizza. It tastes kind of like pizza goldfish. It says meatball parm, and I don't really taste the meat in here, though. Yeah, I taste tomato, I taste cheese, I taste salt, a little bit of garlic. It's definitely good, even if it doesn't taste exactly like meatball parm. I guess my only qualm would be it's, I guess, a little bit salty, but not, not overly. These are definitely munchable. And they're quite addictive as well. Like you just kind of want to keep popping in your, in your mouth. The puffed ones are fun. You know, you bite into them and you get, you get, you, get, you know, you release the air. Mm. There's cracking the shards. Yeah, these are good. I would recommend the, the pasta, the pasta bow ties. I would definitely give these another chance if I see them in the store in a different flavor. I might get the meat Paul parm again. You know, they're not the number one snack on my list, but yeah, they're in like that seven to 7.5 range. Definitely uh, an interesting taste, something to, something worth trying out so what did you give them a number yet yeah I, I, they're around like a 7.5 they're definitely worth a try i you know the only bad thing about them is when you when you bite into the puffy ones and the shards kind of move around your mouth the inside of them isn't coated so and it's relatively bland so you kind of have this eucharistian type of and uh, not eucharistian because it doesn't it doesn't evaporate <laughs> on your tongue like that but it kind of has that same like just un uh you know unsalted unsweetened unreally like flavored wheat I went with a uh, with a wheat snack also for this one. This is a uh, the rolled gold pretzels. They're, these are the thin crisps and the garlic parmesan. I never tried these before. It says they're new. You get uh, 13 pretzels per serving, uh, 120 calories, two grams of fat, and a couple grams of protein in here. And these are made with enriched flour. My favorite part is that there is uh, a little bit of monosodium glutamate in there, and uh, it says that they have a, a they're bursting with flavor. So that's what I like. They are just kind of flat. Looks like somebody ran over sort of a squished a pretzel. 
about the size of a chip here. They have five holes in them. And, it's, you know, there's a lot of dust on here. It actually comes off on your fingers, which I'm not used to. Usually you get like the big chunks of salt on a, on a pretzel, but this is, this is like dusted with really fine salt. So I'm going to pop one in and give you the verdict here. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. So yeah, immediately, I mean, that salt just kind of dissolves right onto your tongue and uh, spreads from out. These are good. They're not as crispy as like uh, some of the other pretzel snacks that I've had. Uh, they're more like, these are more like a cracker consistency, but what I like is you get, you get kind of a punch in the mouth with, with flavor, right? When you put them in, they're pretty salty. The, the Parmesan is subtle. I don't taste a whole lot of that, but you definitely get the garlic. And I'm used to having pretzels as kind of a carrier for something else like hummus or some kind of dip just because they're sort of a, a boring snack on their own. But these would definitely carry the load by themselves. I'd put these at an eight. Like I said, I really, I really enjoy the fact that the, there's kind of an intense flavor to them. So I'm pretty sure that if I leave these, this bag laying around, it's going to be gone pretty quick. Not a huge pretzel fan. I'd put them at about an eight just because of that. Yeah, these are pretty dang good. Well, would these be good with, with real cheese on them or that pub cheese? I know that they're very thin and almost cracker-like. I think you'd be tempted to dip, but I think the flavor of these carries it on their own. I don't know how. It's because it's a bold flavor. I don't know how well. It, you'd have to have something pretty subtle. Maybe some hummus, something that's not really strong. But Sounds good, my man. We are Snack Masters, Inc. Our website is snackmastersinc.com, where you can find all of our old episodes. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, and everywhere podcasts are heard around the world. We're on Instagram, instagram.com slash snackmastersinc. There you can find all of our food photos from this episode, as well as additional mini reviews and short videos. Speaking of videos, we now have a YouTube channel, Snack Masters Inc. on YouTube, at Snack Masters Inc. on Twitter. And if you would like to suggest a snack to us, you can do so at snackmastersinc at gmail. Dot com. Big shout out to the Podcast Discovery Show. Check them out on iTunes. They recently did a feature on Snack Masters Inc. They liked the show. It was uh, it was cool to hear them talk about us. Thanks, guys. That's the Podcast Discovery Show. And you can find them at the Podcast Discovery Show dot squarespace dot com or just look them up on uh, iTunes, Google Play, everywhere podcasts are heard. MSG, we talk about <laughs> junk food a lot on the show, and I Always love a nice junk food movie, a solid B movie. And I came across one on Amazon Prime called Demolition High. Stars Corey Haim. <laughs> All right. His high school is under siege by a group of, uh, you know, a handful of terrorists. Lenny, Lenny Slater, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Lenny? Well, that sounds like a real wuss name to me. So Lenny. What's that short for, huh? Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was Lenny from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with your friends here? Hey, you kids! You guys know the rules about loitering in the halls after hours? You don't, sir. Lenny. From the Bronx. Alan Thicke is also in it. He's a uh, dad joking cop. It's a hidden gem forgotten, but it shows up on Amazon Prime if you have that. You know, I'm, uh, I am I like the Corys, I, you know, License to Drive, Lost Boys, all that stuff. I wish Corey Feldman was in there instead of Corey Haim. I think it would be a more interesting flick for it. You know, I saw Corey Feldman last summer, but he's got this little tour going on. It was almost like, I felt like I died and was Corey Feldman at the show. <laughs> you know in movies when people die and they show you like, this is your life, and they go through all the memories and things you did? That's what his concert is like. He shows like the clips from his movies in a chronological way, then he starts singing random songs from him, and his band starts singing songs from him. He tried to big time us. He showed up on stage late, and he didn't play the song Go For It, which got him viral to begin with. Very disappointing. But other than that, it was uh, it was not as bad as you would think, and it was uh, I don't know, it was a good crowd. It's a bunch of crusty thirty uh, somethings like me. Well, it's it's kind of a requirement, but I don't know if you would have enjoyed it. All right. Corey Haim in the movie, he uh, it's kind of funny. He's bullied by a guy in a Browns jersey, which is worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> And these terrorists come, they take over the school, they besiege the school, and their plan is to take 20 students and have the entire government shut down. But it turns out that that's just a ruse, because what they really want to do is shoot a nuclear missile at the nuclear power plant in town, and it's, it's going to blow everything up. If you have Amazon Prime and you like a good stupid film, I highly recommend this one. I have a tough time with the B-movies. I, I wasn't into like the Sharknado and all that stuff. Um, I don't watch the ones, the cheesy ones on sci-fi with the you know, horrible special effects and all that. But I remember, I remember the Toxic Avenger. Meet little Melvin. He's a 90-pound weakling. 
Everyone hated Melvin. Yeah, I'm gonna take this mop and shove it down your throat. They teased him. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Oh. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. Uh, that's probably the last one I watched. And, and honestly, I know it was like a joke movie in this and that, but I was of the age where it actually kind of scared me a little bit. You know, I was like this, uh, this weird kind of, you know, creepy mutant guy that uh, would go around crushing people's heads and killing them in these horrific manners and stuff. But since then, I really haven't been been into the b movies all that much no but you know i don't you know i don't like the sharknado though the sharknado is uh, i don't like when they're intentionally cheesy i like when they're trying their best like the great thing about this Corey haim film is it's basically die hard in a high school and you can tell that Corey haim like thinks that this role is going to turn him into the next action star after he gets his next fix and uh, that, that's kind of that's kind of the whole movie the, the delivery is the delivery is fantastic and uh there's a couple of there's there's an action movie based line about milk not often you get that. Damn, I shouldn't have bought that second milk. Hey, what? What do you want, man? All right, man, let's blaze a trail out of here. Snackmaster Jr., take us away. If you do that, we will fight all of you guys. <laughs> I told you it was Lenny from the Bronx. Snack Master Incorporated. Snack Master. Snack Master. You'll be snacking with the Snack Master.